Guess who's back in the house? It's me. Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> so I know it's been a hot minute since I've made a video, but I'm back for my comeback era. She's ready. She is less busy. <laughs> I had a really rough, busy semester with um, performances I was involved in. I had to finish my degree and reading was just not the priority. I was self-conscious. I was like, I am not about to upload a wrap up with three books this month. Not my speed, not my jam. I thought I would just catch you up on my reading up into the month of May while I get ready. And if you literally don't care about makeup that is totally fine i'm not going to be like talking about it but if this is something you're interested in i will link everything i use down below if you're curious so like i said i'll catch you up on everything i read up to may and then everything i read in may will be in my wrap up that i'll be posting in a couple of days so in a few days you'll be all caught up literally no one probably cares but just for my sanity i need to document every book that i've read so that I get credit. <laughs> I digress. Let's get into it. Starting with the first book that I read this year, I have this really cute idea. Whatever book is my number one fave for 2021, I'm going to read a book by the same author to kick off 2022. In my head, I was like, this is a great way to kick off the year and have really high odds of me liking the book that I'm gonna start the year with. As you may know, my number one book of 2021 was The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. So I walk my happy little booty into half price books and the first book that I see by Peter Swanson is Before She Knew Him. So let's talk about it. So Before She Knew Him is about this couple, Ken and Lloyd I believe, and they move to this new city as they're starting to kind of get to know all the people that like live around them and stuff they become close with their neighbors hen who loves true crime notices that in the neighbor's house there is a trophy that belonged to this young kid who went missing fairly recently. She's like, why do they have this in their house? The story kind of goes from there. It's nothing like the kind worth killing. <laughs> I do like Peter Swanson's writing style. As far as like plot and structure and everything, these are totally, totally different. Do I look cute like that? <laughs> I have to talk about the twist if we're gonna talk about before she knew him. Don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil it, but also, I don't think this is a book that you should like run out and read immediately. <laughs> Rest in peace to my plan of like wanting to read a book that I thought was gonna just be guaranteed to slap because I love Peter Swanson. Yeah, didn't happen. So the twist was really unexpected. I did not see it coming. However, I didn't think it was groundbreaking. I've definitely read other thrillers with the same twist. I didn't love the way that it ended. Nothing special except for the writing style that I really click with. I believe I gave it two and a half or three stars. It's probably a two and a half star. Right down the middle, very average. The next book that I read in 2022 is Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Oh my god, and you can see literally like the powder like flying around. Sorry. I buddy read this with Rachel from Raven Haired Reader. She is so sweet. We had a lot of fun just like chatting it up about this book. This is my first like cozy mystery. The characters were so endearing. The plot, not very realistic. The characters, incredibly realistic. <laughs> this book follows Finlay Donovan. Why did I think a black shirt was the move? I'm not a beauty guru. This book follows Finlay Donovan, who is a single mom. She is an author. She is just chilling in a Panera Bread, talking to her agent about her new book. It's a 
crime novel. Someone overhears her talking and they come over to her and they basically offer her like $10,000 to kill their husband because they think they overheard her like talking about real life but she was just talking about her book so they think that she's like a hit woman. The chemistry between our two main gals is chef's kiss so funny and I was absolutely living for the cute little romance that was going on and I just loved it. I thought it was really sweet and I was honestly expecting to be really bored because you know I love the gore give me all of it but I loved it just because it was not like life-changing I couldn't give it a five star but I did give it four stars and I have purchased the sequel so I'm excited to read that and hopefully uh, it compares even if it's not as good as the OG I'm just excited to like see the characters again <sighs> This next book I am absolutely dying to talk about. I'm so excited. The next book I read was No Exit by Taylor Adams. Girl. People told me I was going to like this book. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did. The ride. The absolute ride that this book takes you on. This book follows a college-age student named Darby. She's just found out that her mom is really really sick and she has to go home to see her and as Darby is driving home there's a huge blizzard happening outside she gets stopped by a police officer and he says hey kid you're gonna need to wait at the rest stop and wait out the storm because it's not safe for you to drive so while she's waiting at this rest stop she meets a cast of characters and the kicker is while she is walking around outside of the rest stop one of the cars parked has a child in a cage in the back of the car and she has no idea which one of the people in the rest stop has this kidnapped child essentially she has to survive the night <sighs> this book was an easy five stars i was blown away at first i was a little thrown off that the culprit was revealed so early. I wasn't thrilled about that. However, there were plenty more twists to come. I was entertained the entire time. It never got boring. It had a little bit of gore, which I appreciated, but nothing too crazy. I just absolutely loved it. No Exit absolutely lived up to the hype. It was incredible. And I loved the movie. I thought the movie did the book justice. It was a little different. Highly recommend. It is on Hulu. After No Exit, I read Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. I was really excited to read this book. Jar of Hearts is about a girl named Gio who all of a sudden gets convicted of a crime that she committed years and years and years ago when she was in like high school and she has to go to prison. So the first part of the book takes place with her in prison. It also follows her after she gets out of prison and you're flashing back between what happened when she was in high school and the crime that happened and her present day dealing with the consequences. This book is really tricky for me to talk about because all in all, I enjoyed the book but it wasn't as crazy as I was hoping it would be. The big twist in this book I felt like was revealed too early in the scene. You know what's gonna go down and then it goes down and you're like yeah that could have been way more shocking but the way that it was revealed just didn't work for me. I don't know. And that's like kind of important to me in a book. I really liked the little romance elements in it. Um, but the book as a whole, I just, it was missing something. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It was definitely like messed up, gory. I love that part. But the reveals and the way that everything tied up, I was just like, Okay, okay, sorry. There was no way I was gonna be able to do my brows sitting in front of the camera. So I went and did my brows and now I'm back. In conclusion, I gave Jar of Hearts three stars. 
I respect it. I thought it was really, really well written and I really liked the characters. The plot was just not it for me. The reveals didn't work for me. I wasn't surprised or gooped or gagged the way that I wanted to be. So three stars. The next book that I read that I want to talk about is In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This book is about a group of college friends that get reunited at um, their college reunion. We follow pretty much all of their perspectives as they dig up secrets about an incident that happened while they were in college. This book was just a lot of tea. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. I'll tell you, it was a lot of characters to keep track of. I had like a whole diagram, like a family tree. I was like, okay, this person is dating this person, but they used to be dating this person and they're sleeping with this person. It was a lot to keep track of. To me, the end of this book was not worth it. The twist was not what I was wanting it to be. I'd come up with something a lot more interesting in my head and I thought that's where the book was going, but then it took a detour. I also really hated like how this book like wrapped up. I didn't like how we as the reader knew what went on, but it wasn't brought to light in the story. I hate that. Are you kidding me? No, I want to see justice to be carried through. And then there was just like this final scene where it was like, we rode off into the sunset type B. And I was like, Ugh. I want to see justice carried out and I want like people to pay. Ugh. I don't want a happily ever after. I appreciated it, but it was not my jam. I think I ended up giving it three stars. It was one of my most highly anticipated reads and I was really let down, <laughs> but I can see how people would like it and I really liked the beginning, so I ended up giving it three stars. I have one more book that I'm really excited to talk about and that is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I loved this book so much. So They Never Learn follows a teacher at a university who decides to take matters into her own hands and be a vigilante for students and teachers and men who take advantage of women and she kills them. One of the best characters I've ever read in my life. I loved her. So we follow her and then in alternating chapters we follow the perspective of a student at the same university. I just love a good revenge story. Like it just really does it for me. The way that this one was crafted, I had read nothing like it. I was obsessed. I'm gonna grab a lip liner, be right back. I could not believe how absolutely invested in these characters I was. They were so well developed. I felt like I knew them inside and out and I've never rooted so hard for a serial killer. I did unfortunately see the big halfway twist coming. I thought it was pretty obvious what was going on, but if you didn't see that twist coming, I can see how this would just be like the biggest mind blow of all time. I still appreciated it and I thought it was very well done. Regardless of me seeing the twist coming, I had to give it five stars. It was easily a new favorite. I'm obsessed. Just doing the finishing touches. So that is everything I read up till May. And all the books that I read in May will be in my wrap up. I did pretty good for me. It's a lot of books. So stay tuned for that in the next couple of days. I promise I will be back. I will be consistent. I'm so excited to get to reading. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, if this dumb blonde is reading books, you should be too. Bye. You're just gonna have to accept the fact that this video is a hot mess. <laughs>